The Mauser 1871 bolt action single shot rifle. Um, <clears throat> I kind of did a reloading video, took this thing out, shot it at 100 and 200 yards, and I was going to tie in my older videos on this rifle. And uh, not to be confused with the 1871-84, which is a repeating magazine rifle. They are both in the same 11 millimeter by 60 uh, 60R um, Mauser, which sometimes commonly referred to as the 43 Mauser. They are both the same caliber. Uh, but I went back to look. And I did one video on this gun where I test fired it back in 2012. It was a three and a half minute video. And I think I used this rifle. I'm going back in time. Back to the old days of YouTube. It was back 2010, 2012. <clears throat> we used to challenge each other, like me, the gun geek. I know Teleoceros. I put out some challenges and he actually shot them and posted the videos. YouTube had a thing where you can post a video and then I can post to it and link it. So somebody, Gun Geek, got the idea to take a single shot black powder cartridge rifle and take 10 shots or something at 100 yards and see how well you did. And he goes, so he started it. He took his either Remington rolling block or something out and he fired his 10 shots at 50 or 100 yards and tied that video into it where you could, they were, some, I forget how it was done, somehow you linked them all together. And like you'd see the first video, then it would show his, then I would go in and I did it with this gun because at the time <clears throat> it was the only, uh, single shot black powder cartridge rifle I had that I had ammunition for because I was working with the 7184 and I did an extensive thing of videos reloading for it, reloading smokeless black powder the whole nine yards I show you how to disassemble the bolt and everything and over the years I always thought I did it with the single shot well I didn't I didn't even make a video showing you the gun and the reason is, uh, this is a bit different. I'm going to make a video where we will go over this model gun and I'll explain why and what it is. The way the chamber's cut for the ammunition, the groove depth is huge. And, and in other words, it has real deep rifle grooves. And the reason is, it's for using a black powder paper patched uh, cartridge. I have an example of it here. I'll show you by the end of the video. And it makes sense. That way you can fire 40 rounds and you know the, the reason the rifling is deep is so the black powder residue has got somewhere to go. Because the way all of these, this one, the Gra, even the uh, repeater, the bolt action repeater, the rifling is cut noticeably different on the 7184 okay where your groove diameter is 446 this one's five something just like the growl but it still has the same bore and chamber okay like the other 7184 so when you try to get a bullet inside the case that'll match up which is basically like a 4570 bullet when you put it in the case, it's, you know, the thickness of the brass, the chamber's not cut. And it won't chamber. It won't work. You have to fire a grossly undersized bullet in this gun with black powder to bump it up to engage your rifling to get it to work. Or, what I did and got in a rush is you get the healed bullet from uh, Cast Bullet Engineering in Australia makes a bullet that this French uh, guy, I mentioned his name, I forget it now, but he made a healed bullet, it's called the 2005 Gras Bullet. He drew up a design, 
that it's healed, and what it does, it has a wider uh, driving bands in the bullet, and it has a narrower thing that can slide down into the case, and you crimp it, and then you're already close to the groove diameters when you fire the bullet. Now, I had some success in the ground, but actually, I got it to work real well with this gun, okay? And when I was going to show you me shooting it at 100 and 200 yards, I said, okay, I'm going to go back, tie in my videos where I look at the rifle, you know, do close-ups and that. Well, they don't exist. I never made them. This one slipped through the cracks. So, <clears throat> and like I said, the only videos I have of this from 2012 in a challenge, it was a gun geek challenge uh, that I did. And since that time, YouTube has eliminated to where we can't tie our videos together. I think when I did it, you'd have to get permission or something. You'd, you'd ask the other person on his channel, can I have permission? And then my video would be tied in some way. It's been so long, I forgot. But they eliminated that. And then I ran a whole series. I went and deleted them over the years because they were pointless without the system. I used to call them the Koba Challenge. And... I tried them for everything. I tried them for the M95, uh, all kinds of different guns. And other than the Gun Geek and maybe Log Cabin Loon, I think, he, he got in on it with us. And Teleoceros. Teleoceros did several of mine, mostly for the Mosins and stuff. And uh, it was kind of fun, but people didn't... People like to, to comment and be rude and crazy and brag that they're better, but nobody likes to kind of put their money with their mouth where their mouth is and show off in public. And we just kind of did it for fun, you know, me and my friends. But that's going back in time and that. But I intend to do proper videos on this model gun, show it to you, uh, show you disassemblies and that. Uh, I've woefully missed it because for the 7184 I have a lot of detailed videos been out there for a while so let's take a look at the gun and we'll take a look at the ammunition and what I'm doing with it and then I'll go to where I'll have I have my reloading video which is quite lengthy and then where I go and shoot this and where uh, I'll even show you uh, the sights on this because the gra I was running that day head to head with the Gra. Basically, I was shooting the same bullet, same setup in both guns. And I'll let you watch the videos, figure out which one, you know, in your opinion, come out the top. So let's take a look at the gun. I'll show you what I'm talking about real quick, and then later on I'll do some in depth stuff on this. All right, what this rifle is, it was uh, the German Army's early version of the, uh, I guess this may have been the first cartridge gun they adopted. And the difference between this and our more familiar friend is um, this is a single shot gun. You can see it has the same similar uh, way of securing it. No lugs, single lock point in the uh, receiver. And it has the hump in that. It's similar to the 7184, but not quite. The sights, I'm not quite sure, but the reason we want to look at the sights is these sights are more refined than the Graz. And when I was shooting this at 200 yards, it kind of showed. The accuracy on this weapon was pretty good. And you got three barrel, barrel bands. Uh, hold on a minute. Okay, this gun has a three barrel band, sling swivel, cleaning rod, bayonet lug, and forward uh, band there. And then also these have a brass trigger guard. So their trigger guards are brass. On here and usual markings all over in the stock and that go over that better. This particular one was made in 1875. 
There's the top. Now that EN stands for National Army, and this rifle was also made under contract at Steyr in Austria. Here's your markings there. You can see this one is not a fantastic example, okay? But the thing is, the guy's trying to sell one of these, and I never knew this. I had that EN on there. Uh... I'll write down what it is in Spanish, but it stands for National Army. And 500 of these, he said, were bought by the Buenos Aires uh, region to try to overthrow or secede from the rest of the government in Argentina. So these are kind of rare. And there was in the stock down here the EN, but it looks like it's been bashed or worn off over the years. All right, I'll get it back. So that's kind of an overview there. And like I said, with the different chambering, you don't see a lot of people shooting these because they would be wildly inaccurate with a 4 or 46 bullet unless you're using a paper patched soft lead black powder load bullet. Now let me go up and we'll work on the action, take a look at that for, and then go on. Okay, here's our action open. It is a single shot. You see there's no locking lugs. Goes in. You only got your bolt handle as your locking point. Now this screw and washer that retains the bolt in there, <clears throat> there's a difference. One of these, the screw will come out. I don't know if it's on this model. And one of them, the screw will not come out. It's pinned in. You can back it off to get that washer up, and that's how you take the bolt out. Okay, so that's very similar between the two guns. All right. So that looks, as you can see, it's similar to a 7184, but, but this is the more simplified, older version. All your magazine... Uh, cutoffs and, and that are, are not on this. And I believe you just pull it, once you pull the washer up, pull the trigger, it comes out. We'll, we'll look at that later on. Let me show you the safety. All right, now I got this. Try to get this in a good light. All right, and this has the Mausers. I believe this is just a two position safety. So you flip it over, locks the gun, safe. Yeah, see, if you put it in the middle position like the 98, this bolt is simpler and earlier. You know, this is where Mauser was working on this. Hmm. Uh, until he perfected the uh, one on the 98 style. So this is just a two position safety and it does lock the bolt. So when you're on fire, you can get it out. And like I said, I believe this one, the screw will come out and you just pull the trigger, but we'll do that more when we take a very closer look at the gun. And also with this gun, there is no ejector. The extractor will pull the case back, but when you try, you have to tip the gun for the case to roll out or pull it sideways out. It's easiest, you'll see when I shoot it, just to roll the gun over. So you fire it, roll it over, stick another one in, load it. So, that's a quick overview of the gun. Now, let's go look at the ammo and what I'm uh, trying to explain to you, and then uh, we'll go on to the reloading videos. One quick point I forgot, here is the 71 next to the French Gras. And like I said, I was out with them side by side, running them at 100, 200 yards because I'm using the same bullet. But there's a kind of a difference in the sights. If you look at the sight here on the 71, it's typical German, you got a flip up leap, you got the low end, you flip this up like on the sporting guns, there's another sight here. And then you have to go to this uh, site up here. 
Okay, but if you look at it, man, it's well machined, the notch is well defined, and it's pretty accurate. Tiny, yes, but you can see it. With the Gra, I was using this battle sight, and then I was trying to use, when you flip it over, this notch here up close, like at 50 yards and that. But when I got out, I was using that at 100 this here and as you can see it isn't as well defined it's basically like a filed notch in there it works but it's not that like I was complaining if you hear in the videos about the precision and this here also for some reason on these the screw that holds this thing in kind of cuts halfway through the v-notch it's quite wide and it's not as precise or fine as the Mauser sight. And because of that, see that's what that is, a little tiny notch. You can see the other one there. That's what they got, them little bitty notches. Fine in that, and you know, the right front sights are the same, fixed on there. I was able to shoot a bit better with this gun, I think because the sights are more refined. But more on that later. Okay, here's a look at our ammo and what all these videos were about. What I'm using is the cast bullet engineering version of the Gra uh, bullet, which is this here. I don't know if you could see it, but right there, this bullet is what they call healed. This diameter is smaller, and what I do is take a once-fired case and I slide it in up to this point here and that's what it looks like in a case so you would put your ammunition or your powder charge I just press it in by thumb and go up and crimp this with my modified die now compared to this bullet here which is the uh, Lyman bullet that most of us will use in the 7184 this is size, the 446 works quite well in the 11 by 60 or the 43 uh, Mauser cartridge. Alright, the reason this doesn't work is the groove diameter is way bigger and this kind of compensates for it. So, I made a video loading this bullet, this healed bullet, and that will be the next video after this Then I'll take them out and show you how to shoot them. This cartridge here I think is an original cartridge for the for the rifles and you, you could use them in either or the 71 or the 7184 it's a soft lead bullet which probably swaged in a punch press with a paper patch tight on there there is a cardboard wad over a black powder charge in this cartridge I believe this is an original I, I have to look up the head stamp I think it's saying 83 or 86 so it could be 1883, 86, I'm not quite sure. Uh, that's something I'd have to investigate, but I've had this forever. I found this in a large lot of ammunition, odd ammunition, when I was a teenager back like in 1977. And I've had it ever since. For years I didn't know what it was until I identified it. I try to keep an original cartridge of all of these so I can use it to compare measurements of what was made back then in the period and that and an idea how they loaded it but this was the standard military load so I may get into paper patching and replicate these rounds later for both the 1871 the Verndal and I forget oh yeah the French 66-74 the modified chassis needs around there now, what, what I found when I loaded this, I used the Lee Liquid Alex. Put a heavy coat on there. It wasn't quite good enough with the powder I was using. I was getting leading. So what I did is I melted the old Lyman uh, lead, and, or not lead, I'm sorry. Please forgive me. Uh, beeswax and Alex. And then what I would do is dip... The cartridge, this is a Gra cartridge, I you know use the same bullet. Once it's loaded, I get a pot full of this wax and Alex, beeswax and Alex, 50-50 mixture, 
heat it up and I dip the bullet in like this. If there's any extra on the case, I just scrape it off with my thumbnail. But I put this thick coating of extra bullet lube on there. And I'll show you that in my videos. And if you've seen the Gra videos, you'll see where I did that. That seemed to help. The letting wasn't as pronounced. I didn't find a lot of letting in there. Um, as I've discussed with several people, maybe ch changing the powder. I was using 5744, which it develops good accuracy to a point, but it kind of burns hot and fast, and you, I have a lot of problem with letting. So maybe a change in powder and an investigation may eliminate that. And, and we could go with a different thing. Of course, we were running that close at 1,400 feet per second, which is a tad bit too fast for a cast rifle bullet without a gas check on there to help protect it. But that's my explanation on the ammunition, and I'm going to show you where I load this, kind of like this, in one video, and then where I take the rifle out and shoot it at 100 and 200 yards. And thank you. And, you know, if you find this information useful in the, uh, and you're happy and you'd like to donate or contribute to the Cobra 49 channel, uh, the links to Patreon where you can do a monthly uh, contribution or just a flat-out contribution through PayPal Pool. Thank you.